If you love the crusty end of a French baguette, you are going to love this recipe because every single roll is just like that. And then we're gonna have a little bit of fun and we're gonna do some in the Ninja Combi and some in a traditional oven. Welcome to the Salt and Pepper where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today's recipe only requires four ingredients, no more, no less, because traditional French bread only includes flour, salt, yeast, and water. That is it. No oils, no other fats, no enrichment into the dough to be a traditional French bread. Now we're gonna turn the French bread dough into crusty French bread dinner rolls. Because if you're anything like me, you love that crunchy end and that chewy interior. And this way you can get it every single time you grab a roll. There are three basic components to making a delicious homemade bread, and it starts with the dough. So what's important for the dough is getting the hydration level correct and the salt level correct. I happen to think that this French bread dough is absolutely perfect. Then we move into proofing. Proofing can be done several different ways, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. And then, of course, baking the bread. And there's tons of different ways you can bake the bread. But one thing that I wanted to see is how does the combi, where we can introduce a little steam, compare to a regular traditional oven? So we're gonna test that out today. All right, so let's start making the dough. You need three cups of all-purpose flour for this recipe. This will make 12 two-ounce rolls, okay? And what I usually do is cut the recipe in half if I'm gonna make it just in the combi because I can only fit six rolls in there at a time. So I usually cut it in half. But you can also make the double batch of dough and then freeze half of it for later, okay? That will work just fine. I don't weigh my flour because I add the water based on how the flour's absorbing the water. So I don't really measure it like in grams, okay? I don't weigh it out, but I do use a measuring cup. This is a half of a cup, and I'm gonna use three cups total. But what's important is you first wanna sort of fluff your flour in the container that you store it in, and then take something that you can level it off, and that is the proper way to measure flour if you're not gonna weigh it. All right, so let me finish this up, get all the flour in. And I do recommend using all-purpose flour in this recipe instead of bread flour. But if all you have is bread flour, you can use it, but you're gonna need a little bit more liquid. All right, we're done with the flour. Now leave your flour close by because we are gonna need it later in the recipe. And you might even need it right now if you end up adding a little extra water, you may need to add a little more flour. So keep it nearby. The next thing that's gonna go in is my instant yeast. Now you can use active dry yeast, which requires proofing. And what you would do is add about a tablespoon or so of your warm water and mix it up, let it sit. It's gonna get nice and bubbly and frothy. Then you add it to your flour. This is instant yeast, which I love to use, and it just goes right in dry, okay? And it works perfectly. One and a half teaspoons is what you need for this recipe. Remember, I'm making a double batch, so I'm making 12 rolls. So on my website, you're gonna see it's for a half of a batch. You can easily make half of a batch or a double batch just by cutting the ingredients. All right, so that goes in. Now what I like to do is go ahead and turn my mixer on pretty low. So just on the stir function with the dough hook. You don't absolutely have to have a stand mixer to make this dough. You can make it by hand, but you do need to knead it and you're gonna knead it for about 10 minutes or so, okay? But it's, I have the stand mixer and it just makes it so much easier. Once the yeast is incorporated into the flour, then I add one and a half teaspoons of kosher or fine grind sea salt, not table salt. If you wanna use table salt, you're gonna to wanna to cut that down to maybe three quarters of a teaspoon to one teaspoon tops. All right, there we go. Now the water. I have one and a third cups of really warm water. You want your water to be about 104 to 110 degrees. You don't want it any hotter than 120 degrees or it will kill the yeast and your dough will not rise. So I have one and a third, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna use it all. So pay attention with this because it's pretty important. Add in half right away because you're definitely gonna need that much. And I added about three quarters. I added a little bit more than half. Let the mixer stay on stir 
and start to incorporate the flour from the sides of the bowl and slowly hydrate. Flour will hydrate with different amounts of water, just depending on the humidity in your house and the type of flour it is. So if you're using bread flour, like I said before, you're probably gonna need a little bit more water. We're not gonna go by that measurement because the best way to get perfect dough every time is to go by the look of the dough, and that's what we're gonna concentrate on today. All right, so I'm gonna add in another, like two tablespoons. Once most of the flour has pulled from the edges, you have a very dry dough, okay? And we don't want that. That's not gonna make the best crusty roll. So we do need to add some water, but this is where you need to start paying attention to how much you add. Only add about a tablespoon at a time, and I call this washing the bowl. So what I do is just kind of pour a little bit around the bowl and turn the mixer on stir. All right, so the dough picked up almost all of the flour and all of the water, and I look at the very bottom, and it's come clean from the bottom. Now, that would be a fine dough. You could stop here. It would be okay, but I like to have a little bit more hydration in this crusty French bread. So I'm gonna put in another tablespoon of the water and continue to go on stir gonna get kind of sloppy a little bit a little messy but the flour will start to absorb that extra water and what I'm looking for is about a quarter to a half dollar size of the dough sticking to the bottom of the bowl that's when I know the dough is hydrated the way I want for this recipe It's important to remember every time you add a little bit of water to give it some time. Don't freak out and say, oh no, I added too much and start adding flour. Give it a good three to five minutes to absorb that water before you make some decisions if you need to add flour, okay? All right, it's looking good, but we have probably about this much at the bottom sticking. But I want to push the dough down to the bottom now and then do a knead for another minute or so and see what happens with the bottom before making any decisions if I need to add more flour. The dough feels really nicely hydrated. All right, so just push the dough down, put your dough hook back down for your mixer, make sure you lock your stand mixer and then go to stir again. All right, that is perfect. Now I can tell you how much water I have left, but remember this will vary, okay? So let's see. I'd say it's probably two and a half tablespoons. All right, now let's feel the dough. And you see it sticking to the bottom, that's what you want. All right, this, look, this feels really good. Feels really good. All right, take it off the mixer. We are done the kneading process. So that was probably a total of, I would say, five minutes. Now, if you're doing this by hand, it's gonna take you 10 to 15. All right, so it's slightly sticky, okay? But not, not super, super sticky. All right, let me set this right over here for a second, and I'm gonna get out the pan that I'm gonna use to proof my dough in. Now this is the bulk proofing. So you can proof all of it at once and then we'll split it up and we'll make our individual rolls. I'm going to use the Ninja Combi to proof this. So I'm just going to use the Combi pan. Nothing on the bottom, no oil because this is French bread. So we're not even going to use any oil on the pan or anything. And then one thing that is like a little secret that's kind of funny is if your dough is really sticky and you're like me and don't really like it sticking to your hands, Put your fingers in the water before you grab it out of the bowl. 
And believe it or not, that prevents it from sticking to your fingers. So there, see, isn't that funny? You would think it would be the opposite. All right, now I am just gonna make a little round here. This is not really that important, but it helps me determine uh, when it's doubled in size. So take a peek at it now. We want it to double in size. I'm going to proof at 95 degrees for 30 to 45 minutes. If you didn't have the Ninja Combi and you were going to do this on your counter, the proof time will depend on the temperature of your house, but you're going to want to kind of tent this with either some saran wrap or some kind of a loose bag. Um, I like to use these uh, loose bags that go over nicely and they provide a tent because you need to have room for your dough to rise. Or you could use a deep bowl, that works really well too, and then just cover it with some saran wrap. We want it to double in size no matter how you proof it, and then we will go into shaping the rolls. It's been 45 minutes and the dough is definitely doubled in size. So we are ready to move on to the shaping step. Look at that. Might have actually gone a little bit too long, but that's okay. All right, so now we're just gonna turn it over onto a nice clean work surface. And I like to use this mat, but you could use a clean countertop or a large cutting board, whatever you prefer. So just pull it out. Now, if it's sticking to your hands, which this is not too bad, but if it's sticking to your hands, remember, dip them in some water and it won't. All right, there we go. Okay, I'll get that pan cleaned out in a minute because we're gonna actually proof in that pan. Okay, make your dough back into a ball. And now this is where you can decide if you want to measure out, like weigh out each bun so you have absolutely perfect size buns or if you want to do what I do and that is just take some sort of a sharp edge here and cut the dough in half sprinkle a little bit of flour onto the corner of your work surface just a little bit and then have some over here for shaping all right so once you have the dough split Put one half over here, just sitting on the flour. And then we're gonna make six buns out of this. So I do another little ball there. Cut that straight in the middle. And then take it and sort of put it out to like a little bit of a log. At least this is how I do it. You can do it however you want. It's a little bit easier when you're doing four per section, but we're not, we're gonna do three. So we're gonna divide this into thirds. Then you can kind of feel them. I think that one's a little bit bigger than this one, and just sort of, there, that'll be good. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one dough ball. The rest of them can sit over here. Once you have your one roll, we're gonna shape it. Take a little bit of your all-purpose flour, go over the top and kind of around the sides. Just a little bit, okay? Then we're gonna take it and sort of push it down and fold it under itself. And the reason why I'm doing it this way, which might seem a little bit complicated, I'm gonna show you a different way too, is because I don't want the flour to really get into the dough itself. I want it to be on the outside. So I'm kind of being careful that I'm not kneading the extra flour into the dough because then we change our hydration. And I just love the way these rolls turn out, the way that uh, the hydration is right now. So, all right, now we, what we want to do is shape this so that we have a taut surface on the top, okay? That's going to allow a beautiful rise for our rolls. And, and there's a ton of ways you can do it, but this is the way I do it. Go with the bottom of your hand, press down and twirl around. And you can see I'm creating tension on the top of the bun. Don't worry what the underside looks like. That does not matter. We want the tension to be built on the top of the bun. What I like to see is little bubbles forming because that gives you a nice, crispy, crispy crust. Okay, that's it. And then just press them down a little bit. 
Otherwise, they'll just turn into big, like, baseball-looking things. All right, so press it down, and that is one is done. Put a little bit more flour on your work surface and set that to the side there. We repeat that for all of them. Now, let me show you a different option, okay? We have, this is gonna be three individual rolls. So what you can do is take it in your hands, squeeze it, and this is what I call popping, and pop it. And then you essentially do the same thing, um, but when you're, you're working with this kind of a dough and you want them all to be the same size, it can be a little bit trickier. So anyway, let's do it again. So now we, have, we need to get two out of here. Pop it through your fingers like that and then squeeze it off and twist. Okay, and then press it down a little bit. All right, now with the final one, because you can't really pop it too well, but with the final one, I try to do the same thing. Pull it together at the bottom, pull it together here, and sort of just do a little bit of a twist. And if your fingers are too sticky, go ahead and put some flour on them, it's fine. So then go between your fingers and your thumb and give it a nice little push through and then twist the bottom, but leave the bottom on because we need all that dough for our roll. All right, it's two different ways to do it. Now it helps if you don't put flour down on your work surface because that helps to create the tension. But I do usually, like I said before, sprinkle it over. You can have it on the sides too a little bit, okay? And then shape. All right, there we go. So all 12 of our rolls are done. Now we can move on to the second rising. Now, one thing I wanted to share with you is we're making a French bread crusty dinner roll. So it's very important that you allow enough space in between each roll for them to rise and not touch each other, okay? Now, if they touch a little bit, it's not the end of the world, okay? But when you're making a tall, fluffy dinner roll, you usually put them nice and close together, something like this. And then they rise together. And because they rise together, they are forced to rise up. And if they're in a pan, then we're containing where they can go. And so they're gonna rise up. That is not what we're doing here today. We're not making tall, fluffy dinner rolls. However, if you wanted to make a taller, softer dinner roll, you could certainly do it this way. But I tend to like to use an enriched dough to make those type of rolls, not just a lean dough like this is. So today, we're gonna put them onto a rack. This is gonna go in the combi. I'm also gonna proof half of them in my oven because I have a proof setting in my oven. That's just to keep it consistent so that everything is going to be the same. I'm going to proof on the same temperature and everything uh, so that everything's the same so we can really see the difference between the combi and the oven at the end. But if you don't have any kind of a proofing box, so to speak, because that's what we're going to use this for, proofing box, then you can lightly cover them with some sort of a damp towel or put them into a large, or put them onto a large parchment lined tray and then put them inside some sort of a bag that can be tented so that they can double in size. But for the combi, we're gonna get six on here. And the important thing is to put them on each corner because when we go into steam crisp, we don't want these flaps flying up, they'll impede the way the roll cooks. And we want these to be golden brown all the way around and on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna get six in here and we wanna make sure that we really have enough room because they will, they will rise quite a bit. You could even stagger them a little bit if you wanted to. All right, there we go. 
Now I'm gonna set this to the side and get my other tray and put these other rolls on for the oven, okay? All right, this is the pan that's gonna go into the oven and the fan runs in my oven during the proofing process. So I just lightly dampened this towel and I'm gonna lay it right over. That's just gonna keep a little moisture so the tops don't dry out during the proofing process because that will impede the rising and the bake of the roll at the end. All right, so I'm gonna just throw this in the oven, throw the other ones in the combi, and then we will proof until they're doubled in size, which usually takes about 30 minutes. All right, so to proof in the Ninja combi, you don't need to put any water in the bottom of the pan. I could just put the rack in there, but because I'm gonna need water to do the steam crisp, which is gonna bake the rolls, I'm gonna put a quarter cup of water right in the bottom right now. That way I don't have to disturb anything when I go to bake. It's just resetting the function and the temperature and the time. All right, so we're gonna put that rack right in there above the water and do the same thing that we did before. Slide the pan right into the bottom here. Close the door, 95 degrees, and then we could take our time down to 30 minutes and hit start. All right, so we'll let those two proof, and then once they're done, we will get to baking them up in the combi and the oven. All right, we have the rolls from the oven and the rolls from the combi. Oh my goodness, they look so good. And so do these. These are a little bit smaller, but they proof the same amount of time. Now my oven is still preheating, so I'll let these proof for about five more minutes. But, um, they look good, so everything's gonna be good. Now with the combi, you don't even have to open it once it's done proofing. I just did that to show you guys. But we can just go straight into the combi cook. So you're gonna to wanna to select the function for combi crisp. That is very important. The combi crisp is only going to steam for about five minutes or so. At least that's the preheat time where the water gets boiling and then it stays steamy for another few minutes but then the dry heat dries everything up and starts to brown and crisp the buns so or the rolls so combi crisp is what we want we want to go to 375 degrees and the time is 15 minutes and just hit start and let it do its thing They're all done. Oh my gosh. They're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. They're gorgeous. All right. Let me get them off of this pan because I like to take them off and let them cool on a cooling rack so they don't steam. This is like amazing. I'm gonna show you the bottom in just a minute here. Let me just set this pan back in here for a second. We are done with the combi. I can turn that off. My goodness. Oh, and the, oh, don't hit them too hard because you'll break through the crust. That's how flaky it is. All right, let's take a look at the bottom real quick. Yay, we got some browning, perfect. It looks beautiful. All right, I'll get the rest out of the oven and we'll let these cool and then I'll give them a taste. All right, so these were cooked in the Ninja Combi 375 Combi Crisp for 15 minutes. These were cooked in the oven 425 degrees for about 18 minutes. Um, and I can tell by the, the look of them, I mean, these look glossy, almost like I did an egg wash, but I didn't. Um, these are a little bit duller. Uh, they have browning that's pretty 
Oh, they burned on the bottom a little bit. Oops, I didn't even realize that. All right, that's the oven ones. But I mean, there is a difference in the way that they look, for sure. And I am a little shocked by that, that it's to this degree, to be honest. I am really shocked that these look so shiny and beautiful and these look very dull. So let's see what they look like inside. I'm gonna pick two that are about the same size. So when we open them up, we're comparing rolls to rolls. All right, so these are about the same. This one and all of the ones that went into the oven seem to have risen higher and never really relaxed out like these did. So it seems like the ones in the oven, all of them sort of raised a little bit higher, but a little bit rounder. Like these look more like a roll I would want to serve. All right, let's cut them open. Oh, it's so crunchy. Oh my gosh, these are my favorite. All right, it looks good inside. They're still a little warm, but they look good inside. Now, the true test will be, does it have that chew that a good French bread has? All right, let's go ahead and open these up. Okay, they're crunchy. The crumb inside looks similar, um, maybe a little bit tighter in this oven one, but they look pretty similar, so okay. All right, so I'm gonna set the ends here. We've got the two tops, and I'm gonna spread some butter on them, of course. All right, here we go. Which one do I go for first? Well, let's do the combi one first. All right, so it should be crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside, just like a really good French baguette. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, so, so good. Wow. Oh, the flavor. Perfect amount of salt. Oh my gosh. Can you see that little crispy crust right there? It's so awesome. Oh my gosh. They reheat really nicely as well. You just pop them right back in your oven or your combi and um, reheat them for a few minutes on like 400 degrees, maybe five minutes and they'll be great. And if they soften up any, because sometimes as buns or rolls sit or bread, they'll soften up a little bit. Just pop them right back in the oven and they'll firm up again. All right. Feels kind of the same. I think this one might be a little bit crispier. Okay. So, this is interesting. It's chewy, but it's dense. Like, even though the crumb look the same, they're not the same. These are definitely better, hands down. Well, now if you never had these, these are perfectly passable rolls. I mean, they taste good, but just a, a little bit denser. And these are not. These are just so perfect. Oh my gosh, even the crunch is better. Well, hands down, we have a winner, the Ninja Combi, hands down. If you enjoy making bread and you are looking for some sort of an oven that will uh, provide some steam, because you don't want to mess with putting steam into your, you know, water into your oven or anything, consider the Ninja Combi. It works really well.